So you can grab a link cable and a friend with a Game Boy, and with both packs you can catch them all. One of the biggest reasons for Pokemon's success is the sense of community and connection. Ever since the release of Pokemon Red and Blue, the idea of bonding with and helping fellow players has been heavily promoted, whether it be through trade evolutions, version exclusives, or multiplayer battling through the Link Cable or GTS. But another contributing factor to Pokemon's social influence is the countless events over the years, location-specific events held for a short period of time that gave out unique Pokemon that either have special moves or are just flat-out unobtainable otherwise. But there's one extra special event that I want to talk about today that's unlike any other event in Pokemon history. A virtual university for the most avid Pokemon trainers at the time. It's an event that is almost as old as Pokemon itself, an event that yields Pokemon's craziest and rarest real-life prizes. And yet, it's fallen far into obscurity over time. So let's take a tour through the dusty hallways of Pokemon's secret school and see the treasures hidden within. This is the wild tale of the Tamamushi University. To begin, we have to go all the way back to the spring of 1998, when Pokemon was in its baby years. But even during its infancy, in Japan, the unique creature collecting game had taken the country by storm, especially in elementary schools. To cash in on this new craze, a Japanese publishing company called Chugakugan, who also produces the Pokemon Adventures manga, wanted to run a lengthy Pokemon-themed promotion for the Chugakugan Learning Magazine, which was their monthly magazine targeted towards elementary schoolers. But what exactly would they be able to do that could hook young children to this campaign for an extended period of time? Giving away cool real-life prizes? Making an interactive Pokemon experience to win these aforementioned prizes? Maybe even a special Pokemon to help them out in-game? Well, what about all of those? Why not create an entire fictional university with monthly exams to test the knowledge of experienced Pokemon players and reward those who kept up with each edition with exclusive prizes? It was a genius idea. So, in May of 1998, after a short announcement of the event earlier, the first exam of the Tamamushi University was released. To invite students interested in participating, the first exam for the university was just a simple entrance exam. Questions consisted of things such as identifying buildings in various cities in Kanto, as seen here. One of the buildings is the place where you can grab an Eevee on the top floor, as well as get the T in the remakes. The second is the Celadon Gym, and the last location doesn't seem to be on the page, but judging by the creases on the paper, I would guess that it was either the Celadon Pokemon Center, the hotel in the southeast corner, or the small area with the man that teaches soft-boiled. Other questions tested Pokemon knowledge based on pictures, such as identifying the number of limbs on a Pokemon based off of its drawing. Each exam was taken from a page of the magazine that was to be mailed to Shogakukan, and when turned in, participants would receive their score along with an official admission letter. And because this was just an entrance exam, no real prizes were given. But from here on out, you are now an official Tamamushi University student. The exams would only get harder, but if you managed to stick it through, the true prizes would await you. July of 1998 was the beginning of the semester for the newly admitted students. Between the entrance exam and then, there were a couple of flavorful extra things related to the promotion, but nothing super noteworthy. After a restful summer, it was finally time for students to begin their Pokemon academic journey. The professor exam was the first real exam students took. The questions were more difficult than those from the entrance exam, requiring knowledge from not just the games and images, but also from the anime and previous issues of the magazine. In honor of the test being more difficult, anyone who took the exam would get a free pin with the Tamamushi University logo on it, a handbook with various Pokemon facts and information about the university, and a student ID card with a unique number for each participant. Looking at the few existing images of the inside of the handbook, you can see just how much effort was put into this event to make it seem like a real school dedicated to Pokemon. And there's a bit of a nostalgic charm to it. It's just something you don't see nowadays. But the real treasure was only to be rewarded to the most prestigious of players. For the few who were able to get a perfect score, 
they would be eligible to enter in a lottery where exclusive merchandise was given, such as a watch with the university's logo, a Pokedex-themed backpack, and a pendant with the university's logo and name sewed onto it. Once again, really cool and rare stuff. But not only that, for just 30 winners, a special Magikarp was distributed. This Magikarp, known as the University Magikarp, is one of the most obscure event Pokemon of all time, being the only Magikarp to ever know the move Dragon Rage. I talked about this event Pokemon in an older video, but seeing as winners would have had to meet up in person to trade via a link cable, I'm pretty certain that not all 30 winners got their Magikarp, and knowing that nobody at the time knew just how rare they would become, given how new Pokemon was, I'm sure most winners just evolved them into Gyarados, but still, it would be incredible if somewhere in a dusty Pokemon red or blue cartridge lies one of the final remnants of this Pokemon's existence. But given that the majority of these entrants were probably elementary schoolers, we'll probably never know for sure. The next exam was the Super Professor exam, featured in the August of 1998 issue. Of course, being a continuation of the original professor exam, this one was harder than the previous, with most of the questions having a heavy emphasis on specific moments in the anime. Now, there wasn't too much special about the goodies for this one, just little no cards and student IDs themed after the school. However, unlike the professor exam, if you were able to get a perfect score, you'd also be rewarded with a one-of-a-kind certificate featuring the three legendary birds congratulating you for your hard work, which I would imagine would net to a lot of bragging rights in school playgrounds. But now, we're gonna get into the real obscure stuff, the golden treasure locked behind this event. Because after a fairly uneventful few months, in November of 1998, Tamamushi University would close off the year with its last true exam, the Hyper Professor Exam. This exam was significantly tougher than both of the previous ones, and by significantly tougher, I mean it. It contained questions ranging from moments in the anime, to specific events in both the mainline and spin-off games, to even really weirdly niche things such as knowing the exact height of a Pikachu drawing on an airplane during a recent Pokemon event by a Japanese airline company, as well as knowing what happens when you give Pikachu a gift in the pocket Pikachu accessory. Yeah, I don't think many people passed this exam. But that just adds to the mystery behind the rewards given to the few who did. For those who got perfect scores, they'd receive yet another unique certificate congratulating them. Although, I'd imagine this one to be way rarer than the one from the Super Professor exam. All entrants also received a special notebook with a pair of specially designed pencils. The notebook contained various Pokemon-themed activities that related to school topics such as math, music, and English. I say English in quotes because, uh, the words in English were not exactly the most useful ones to know. Again, knowing how long ago and obscure this event was, I seriously wonder how many perfectly mint condition notebooks and pencils there are today, like without a single scratch or pencil mark. And if there are still a few, I wonder how much they'd be worth. But then again, I don't think they'd have a big demand. But what I do know has had Poke Collectors draining their wallets from this event is probably the most iconic prize of them all, the University Magikarp Pokemon card, one of the holy grails of Pokemon card collecting. To give you an idea of just how elusive and prized this card is, only 1,000 of them were given to the people who had the highest scores, and out of all of those, only 14 perfectly mint copies of the card are currently known to exist, each being worth over $60,000. It was truly one of a kind, just like this event. But sadly, with the year coming to an end, so did the school semester, and that would mark the end of the Tamamushi University. Or did it? In early 1999, the Shikakugan magazines would wrap up the campaign with two final events. First was the graduation exam, which acted as a final exam for the students, where instead of answering questions based off of Pokemon trivia, they would have to design a brand new move with the drawing of a Pokemon using it. Upon completion, students would receive a graduation diploma for attending the university. But the last and most interesting event was the official Tamamushi University anthem. Yeah, these guys were seriously dedicated to making this feel like a real school. In January of 1999, readers voted on what would be the final official anthem. This anthem would be performed during the 9th Next Generation World Hobby Fair, held shortly after the publication of the January issue. Pretty cool, right? 
Well, there's one little thing that's strange about this song. Despite the song being performed in front of a large audience, there is no digital audio recording or footage of its performance. The only proof of its existence is through three cassette tapes given out to three incredibly lucky winners during the fair. These cassette tapes hold the only known audio recording of this anthem. It's almost like a piece of lost media, not knowing how the anthem goes. These tapes probably haven't been played in decades, and even then, who knows if they still work properly. There's a good chance that it's been completely erased by time. But its obscurity is kind of the charm of the whole thing. It having occurred during Pokemon's infancy, the rarity of the prizes, and the sheer amount of dedication to the event is what makes it so astounding and surreal. It's hard to imagine an event of a similar scale nowadays. Looking at old and obscure things in Pokemon's early history like this always surprises me with the amount of passion being poured into the franchise. This passion strengthening the community and bond of young players across the globe, forming lifelong friendships in the process. There is a warm sense of connection among Pokemon fans during these events, and that's what Pokemon is truly about, bonding and growing together. And that's what Pokemon is truly about, bonding and growing together. Because at the end of the day, life is better enjoyed together with those connected to you.